morning, San Antonio starts right now. This morning on GMSA, NASA is ready for launch with their Artemis rocket. We'll take you to live to Cape Canaveral, Florida, ahead of today's main event in just moments. And take a look outside. Those lights are shining and the day is just getting ready to get started. Good morning. It's 6 o'clock this Saturday, September 3rd. Sarah, good morning. Good morning. Jonathan Cotto in the house with us. Great to have you, Jonathan. Thank You're you. usually out there That's live right. reporting for us. And look at you looking sharp in the suit. Oh, I try. I try. Thank you, Sarah. And you're looking lovely yourself. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, you know who's really lovely? Our new AMS certified Ooh, meteorologist. Wow. Sarah Thanks for that, guys. Yeah, the American Meteorological Society. How so do you say Thank that. you, certified <laughs> me you as a certified broadcast meteorologist. We'll talk about what that means a little Too bit cool. later. Basically, it just means I was legit before and I'm more legit now. <laughs> right. Um, hey, guys, I did want to talk about the fact that there is going to be some rain this weekend scattered around San Antonio. I know the timing is not ideal with it being Labor Day weekend, but I do want to put your minds cities. It's not going to rain all weekend long, but there are going to be times of downpours. Okay, outside right now it's 78 degrees. It feels like 81 because of the high humidity. Here's today's forecast. Again, fairly quiet during the first part of the day, but in the afternoon we'll have 60% coverage of downpours around San Antonio. Temperatures today should just be in the mid to upper 80s for the high temperature with winds from the east at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. It's a big travel weekend. I know a lot of people are hoping uh, to, to perhaps get some time on the coast, but unfortunately your bay and beach forecast for Corpus Christi Bay Rockport area looks pretty damp. Today there's about a 70% chance for showers, tomorrow an 80% chance for showers, and even on Labor Day itself 70 percent chance for some showers and storms. So rainier along the coast, but we do have a chance for some showers and storms around San Antonio this Labor Day weekend. I've got a look at that future cast. I'll show you a neighborhood view of what you can expect. And of course, we'll talk about uh, temperatures not being all that bad as well. So that coming up in just a few minutes, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating after a couple overnight shootings at an apartment complex. This happening on the city's northeast side. The first one happened just before midnight at the complex in Mid Crown near Walsham. Police tell us there was a fight when a man was shot and killed. The suspects ran off. Then a couple of hours later, another shooting. This time a woman was shot and taken to the hospital. Investigators say the shootings are not related. And a woman is dead this morning after she was hit by a vehicle on the city's northeast side. This all unfolding around 1.30 this morning on Loop 410. This is near Harry Wurzbach exit. That's where police say they found the woman lying in the middle of the highway. She died at the scene. The driver who hit her did not stop to help. And this morning, the newest COVID booster shots are making their way to doctors, offices and pharmacies around the country. Here in Texas, the state health department says the first doses will arrive next week. So how many doses can we expect? Here's those numbers broken down. The CDC says about 900,000 doses are set aside for Texas. Most would be given to health care providers. And health officials warn another wave of infections could spread as vaccine protections wear off. Now, Pfizer's updated booster is available to those 12 and older, while those 18 and older have the option to get the Moderna shot. These boosters target the Omicron variants, which are dominant here in the U.S. Some people around San Antonio say they're ready for their next dose of protection. I don't want to have COVID and all the negative things that come about it, right? So if the, if the vaccinations are available, I want to take advantage of them. Well, Metro Health hasn't said when it will get its San Antonio shipment, but the state says another shipment of 200,000 doses would also go to larger retail pharmacies like HEB, CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart. And COVID vaccines are part of the Biden administration's latest funding request to Congress. Now, nearly half of the $47 billion proposal would go towards COVID response efforts. The request specifically refers to the need for at-home tests. The federal government has been mailing them, uh, mailing them out to people who've requested them. But the feds had, had to stop doing that on Friday when the program ran out of money. And some of the money would be also be earmarked for the monkeypox outbreak. Metro Health confirmed San Antonio now has 33 cases of the monkeypox. That's up by six cases since Monday. 
For now, doses of vaccine are still limited, but Metro Health says it's trying to get more. And topping your morning headlines, you're looking live at Cape Canaveral, Florida, where NASA is counting down to their launch of the Artemis 1 rocket. The first launch was canceled earlier this week due to technical issues. That's right. Now, on top of the rocket is a crew capsule with three test dummies. They'll fly around the moon and back over the course of the next six weeks. Very exciting. This is NASA's first attempt to get to the moon since the Apollo program 50 years ago. Morgan Norwood is in Cape Canaveral with the latest. Standing 36 stories high and aimed toward the sky, NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS rocket, is ready for liftoff. The clocks at Kennedy Space Center counting down once again for a second launch attempt for Artemis 1, an uncrewed test flight that will fly around the moon and back over the next 37 days. With a little guarded uh, optimism, uh, we're we're set to go this weekend. Monday's first attempt was scrubbed in the final hour because of a cracked vent valve in an inner tank and a bad engine sensor. Since then, NASA crews have worked around the clock to make repairs, and they say they're feeling confident. Right now, team has really just done a fantastic job getting us out of launch attempt number one, repairing all the issues, and getting us into a safe configuration. The Artemis program is designed to establish a sustainable human presence on the moon by the end of the decade. Anne McLean is on the short list for one of the crewed missions. Our long-term big goal is going to Mars, exploring places that we've never been before. Landing on the South Pole of the Moon is going to test and develop technologies and teams um, that will enable that future mission. And once fueling begins this morning, the launch team will test the engine once again, this time earlier in the countdown, in order to catch any problems. Now, if the launch is delayed for any reason or doesn't go up as planned, the next launch attempt would be on Monday. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. In some other headlines, California's governor has declared a state of emergency over wildfire that's growing quickly near the Oregon border. The so-called Mill Fire has grown to more than 3,900 acres and is 0% contained since it started Friday afternoon. Structures in the town of Lincoln Heights have been destroyed. Evacuation orders for nearby residents are now mandatory. As those flames spread, it's not known what sparked the fire. And today kicks off one of the busiest travel weekends of the year. Many people are hitting the road while others jump on flights to take a quick trip for Labor Day. So 12 and a half million people nationwide are expected to fly from U.S. airports over this weekend. The San Antonio International Airport says they've already seen a bump in travelers. However, cancellations and delays are still an issue, especially when it weather comes into play. So if you're looking to fill up before hitting the road, gas is averaging about 320 a gallon here in San Antonio. And tennis icon Serena Williams bid an emotional goodbye to the U.S. Open overnight with a close loss in the tournament's third round. It's like been a huge fan of the Williams sisters since I was nine years old. They are incredible. They're incredible. And I love when she said there wouldn't be a Serena Williams without a Venus. Goodness. And, uh, well said. I was crying well said. last night watching it, but congratulations. You go, girl. Huge congratulations. Serena definitely left with dignity for sure. Time is 6.09, temperature 78 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, we're headed to the Pearl for an inside look at this new restaurant. David Elder tells us what to expect on today's Texas Eats. Plus, a San Antonio council has an idea that would make things easier for parents who want to give up their children without being prosecuted for it. We'll explain in just minutes. 78 degrees at 6.09. Our Newly crowned AMS meteorologist Sarah Spivey will have the forecast. Can we expect rain this weekend? She'll explain when we come back. In other health news, a San Antonio councilman is proposing a plan in the midst of stricter abortion laws. His proposal would bring specialized drop-off boxes to hospitals, police stations, and fire stations. In Texas, parents can surrender a child 60 days or younger to a hospital or fire station. But there may be a negative stigma parents may feel when speaking with officials. Councilman John Courage says a silent alarm on the box would alert first responders and eliminate any interactions. However, the city attorney will need to make sure those, uh, this does not contradict any state laws. All right, Sarah Spivey. Um, okay, we were just talking about the rain chances yeah. earlier that we can expect. 
Right, and so it will not rain every day this Labor Day weekend everywhere, right? But there will be the chance for some showers and storms out there widely scattered and separated in between around San Antonio in the metro area. Let's go ahead and take a look outside right now. The first half of the day here is going to be fairly quiet for San Antonio. It's 78 degrees. Dew points are in the mid 70s. It feels like 81. All right, let's take a look at the radar right now. We do have some showers and storms across the Edwards Plateau and closer to the Rio Grande and the Rio Grande Plains. But as I was saying, this weekend is not going to be an ideal weekend to go down to Corpus Christi Rockport because as you can see right now, there are plenty of showers uh, out there at the moment. And as we get some daytime heating, they're really only going to increase in coverage uh, off up to the uh, north toward Rock Springs, Valverde County and Del Rio. We're actually seeing some thunderstorms right now in Edwards County just to the north of Rock Springs. And here's something I want you to see. Take a look at the rainfall rate uh, with this storm just to the north of Rock Springs. Seven inches an hour is the rainfall rate. Is it going to rain seven inches in the north of Rock Springs? No, but that means that if this storm was to park over northern Rock Springs for an hour, it would dump seven inches of rain. That is some very torrential downpours. Now, thankfully, it's slowly moving, but still this kind of very heavy rain in pockets is what is going to be possible over this weekend. We've been seeing some rain in Del Rio throughout the overnight hours. If you're joining us from Del Rio, you may have woken up for some thunder and lightning earlier right now, though, just some light rain out there near Del Rio. And as I mentioned, it's quiet here at the moment in San Antonio. And for most of the day today, it is going to be quiet. But as we head into the afternoon, that's when we'll start to see pockets of showers and storms. The coverage should be about 60%. So unfortunately, not everybody is going to see rain and those that do see rain are going to be seeing those heavier downpours like the one I just showed you up north in Rock Springs. Uh, so 60% coverage this afternoon. You can see again that by about seven, it's still about 60% coverage around the San Antonio metro area as we head into the overnight hours that rain is going to become more light in nature around San Antonio about 40% coverage. So as we look at today's case at 12 hour forecast again, very quiet to start off the day here as we head into the afternoon, though that's when rain chances are going to increase. Coverage should be about 40 to 60% this afternoon. Temperatures will actually top off in the upper 80s right after uh, or right around lunch. And then as we see some some more showers and storms in the forecast this afternoon. Our temperatures will actually cool down into the 70s by about 6 p.m. So even if you don't get a heavy downpour right over your house, we're going to have those cooling rain cooled outflow boundaries from these showers and storms, and that's why temperatures will be cooling down. Now there is a, a slight risk for some flash flooding today. Scattered downpours around San Antonio in this dark green color will produce pockets of heavy rain and those pockets of heavy rain could uh, lead to some localized flooding issues. So I'll be keeping an eye on that today. As we head into your Sunday though in the morning, there's going to be some light rain around San Antonio in the morning. The heavier downpours will shift south of San Antonio. Coverage in the morning should be about 50% for some of that light rain. And as we head into the afternoon tomorrow, our rain chances will become fewer and far between but we've still got about a 40% chance for some downpours in the afternoon for your Sunday. So to summarize everything I said, today scattered showers and storms, especially in the afternoon. And when I say scattered, again, that's pockets of rainfall. Early tomorrow morning, we're going to have some light rain. Clouds are going to stick around. Highs will only be in the mid 80s. And then for your Labor Day itself, less coverage of downpours, but a few downpours are still possible on Labor Day. And when we talk Talk about rainfall potential. We're looking at about up to half an inch around San Antonio with more uh, to the south. Coming up, we're going to talk about uh, again the tropics as we head into next week as well. But just to summarize everything, yeah, there's going to be a few downpours this weekend, less rain chance during the week next week. Thank you, Sarah. I'd love to hear that the possibility of rain is on the table. We need rain. We need Absolutely. it. Also, yeah. I like that the, the temps are cooling down too. Oh, yeah. Feeling more fallish. More pumpkin spice lattes. It right, just means a it. lot of wonderful things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is 618 and 78 degrees.
And still ahead, if you're looking for something to do this weekend, look no further. We've got a fun idea that won't hurt your budget in just minutes. And up next, David Elder at the Pearl to show off a new restaurant. And he says he's cooking up something good this morning on Texas Eats. That is, that's just falling apart. Cheers. Cheers. That's the bite. Oh my goodness. The cabrito is so tender. Then you have that mole that's on top, slightly smoky. Everything just works so well together. It's bright and flavorful, especially with those pickled red onions on there. You just get that all together in the one bite. This does come with rice, beans, and tortillas on the side. So I can imagine just getting a tortilla, loading that thing up, and going to town. This stuff is delicious. Yep process of making it. It takes a long time, right? Yeah, we get this uh, goat that comes, this cabrito that comes out of uh, Windy Hill and out in Bernie. We butcher the whole animal. And then after we put it on a brine, we rub it down with some more chilies. After that, we wrap them up in banana leaves and then we drop that into our underground pits. You could tell the love that's getting put into there because it's just so tender. So for, I want to eat the whole thing right now. Uh, that looks amazing. Super delicious. I, I'm sure y you've frequented the Pearl before. It's always uh, exciting to get a new restaurant down there. Yeah. Every other day. <laughs> you live right by it. Right next to it. So right, I'm constantly gonna, eating that. <laughs> All right, time in Temp is uh, 623, 78 degrees. Up next, hundreds of people are gathering at a train station in London for a magical celebration. Oh my gosh, I'm such a Potterhead. We'll explain <laughs> why in your morning spotlight. In this morning's spotlight, if you're a fan of Harry Potter, listen to this. You have something to celebrate. Oh, I'm here for it. Hundreds of muggles and wizards have gathered at Platform 9 and 3 quarters in London's King's Cross Station for a Back to Hogwarts Day celebration. So every year in September, fans of the Harry Potter series pack their trunks and owls as the Hogwarts Express departs for another school year. This year's celebration featured the cast of the play Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And back here at home, if you don't have any Labor Day plans, here's an idea that's easy on your wallet. So movie theaters across the country are trying to bring back audiences after COVID. So places like AMC and Regal are pulling out all the stops for National Cinema Day. Tickets for all shows are just $3. As a bonus, AMC tweeted it will be offering a drink popcorn combo for five bucks. Sign me up, Sarah. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm here for a good movie. All right, 627 and 78 degrees. And still ahead at 6.30, Labor Day travel isn't the only thing that's heating up. How extreme weather could put a roadblock on flights this weekend? And we have an emotional ending to Uvalde's first home game last night that celebrated more than just return to football. You don't want to miss these highlights. That's next. Good morning, San Antonio. It's 6.30 on Saturday, September 3rd. So happy to have Jonathan Gotha in the house with us this morning. I know Thank you're you usually so much. out and about. That's right. Just nice to be away from, like, not in the elements. That's right. And it's been a little bit muggy. You know, it's getting cooler, but... You can feel it sometimes oh, early the in the humidity. morning. Oh, the humidity. Sarah Spivey. Absolutely. It's the worst. And the humidity is the big thing you're going to notice during the first part of the day today. But we are going to see our rain chances increase as we head into the afternoon. Let's take a look at your KSAT 12-hour forecast right off the bat. Uh, it's mostly cloudy outside right now. Temperatures this morning are in the upper 70s, near 80 degrees. As we head into the lunch hour, uh, we'll still only be seeing isolated rain right around noon. But into the afternoon, our rain chances are going to increase. Increase. We'll see rain in spots this afternoon. 60% chance for showers and storms. Coverage will be about 60% and wherever rain falls, it will be heavy at times. Again, because of the scattered and random nature of today's rain chance, it's difficult to know exactly which areas will get some heavy rain, but wherever rain falls, it will be heavy this afternoon. And in fact, over this Labor Day weekend, we are going to have continued chances for rain. Tomorrow, about 50% coverage and on Labor Day, itself a little bit less coverage but still 40 percent chance as far as rainfall potential goes up to half an inch around san antonio with up to an inch south of san antonio and then closer to laredo about three inches 
a plus or possible near Laredo. Now coming up in the forecast, I'll show you the future cast time out when we have our best chances for rain as you're planning. I'm sure a very busy Labor Day weekend and I'll tell you what you need to plan for and what we need to watch out for that in a few minutes. Jonathan, Sarah. <laughs> The work continues in and around the Alamo City. Now that we're in the month of September, there's a few spots you want to be aware of. Road closures that you can expect. So we're going to start here off U87, otherwise known as Rigsby Road. Striping operations are actually current, and you may have seen them already going on. But according to TxDOT, that will wrap up on Monday, September 19th. This will take place during the day, so 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. Drivers, expect some alternating, alternating lane closures in both directions from Roland Avenue to Loop 410. Let's head over to Loop 1604 over on the northwest side of San Antonio, where a lot of work continues to take place for Loop 1604. This time, the barriers that you've probably seen out there will be relocated on Thursday, September 8th. And according to TxDOT, that work should wrap up on September 15th. It's overnight, so those late night owls or early bird commuters plan ahead because it's from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. The eastbound entrance ramp closure will be there uh, for at Lock and Terra Parkway. Let's take one last look here at I-10 over on the east side of Bear County, where barrier work will continue on Friday, September 9th and that should wrap up on September 12th. But keep in mind, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning is when you can expect a full closure of the westbound main lanes from File Road to Loop 1604. But you know where to find that information. You can grab those phones, open your camera app, scan the QR code by hitting the center of your screen. That will take you directly to the KSAD traffic page and that will have a list of all the closures taking place in and around the Alamo City. Thank you, Stephen. Well, the Bear County Sheriff's Office needs your help to find a driver of a truck accused of cutting off and hitting a victim with their flatbed trailer near Grossenbacher and Highway 90. Take a look at your screen. The victim who was hit took a picture before the suspect got away. Here is a look at that truck that the suspect was driving. It appears to be a 2015 Dodge Ram light gray with a flatbed trailer that was carrying a construction style skid loader in the truck's bed. Investigators say the listed address for the truck is incorrect. If you know who this truck belongs to or this driver is, you're urged to call the Bear County Deputy's Office. That number on your screen right now, 210-335-6000. And new this morning, the Cibola Police Department is seeing an increase in cases of sextortion. They say specifically targeting teens and young adults. Sextortion involves victims being threatened or blackmailed into sending explicit images. It can happen on any social media site that allows people to meet and communicate. The most common place is Snapchat, Instagram, and in some cases, children's games like Roblox and Minecraft. The FBI and police have tips on how to talk about this with your child. This includes telling them to block or ignore messages from strangers, and more importantly, let them know that they can ask for help at any time they receive something suspicious or are feeling uncomfortable. This morning, we're tracking new details of a deadly discovery at the border. After days of heavy rain, the Rio Grande swelled and took the lives of eight migrants trying to cross the waterway. This was near Eagle Pass yesterday. The Border Patrol says the people who were killed were part of a much larger group of 100 people. Agents rescued 37 migrants and detained 16 others. Officials in Mexico took 39 migrants in custody. Border Patrol also says six people were found dead on the U.S. side and two others on the Mexico side. And now to fentanyl concerns this morning. Over the summer, Hayes County saw three teenagers die from drug overdoses. Our Jesse De Guado spoke to one mother who shares her emotional story. This is her room. How she liked it. <laughs> It had been like a sanctuary for Veronica Caprosi's daughter, Danica, a beautiful, bubbly high school senior who considered someday being a mathematician or engineer, dreams that'll never be. I found my daughter face down. Well, she had been, she had been gone for several hours. I don't know what happened. I don't know. Until her mother found a picture of some pills on Danica's phone. Her aunt says she recognized them from TV as ones that can be laced with the dangerous opioid fentanyl. Well, they put it out there. These kids are, they, they're curious. Asked whether Danica had used them despite her mother's warnings. Not that I'm aware of. Danica's mom says working in this Mexican restaurant gave her daughter a sense of independence. She was earning her own money. This is her little hallway. Possibly, she says, the pills Danica may have taken. Her official cause of death is still pending. I love this one the most. Even so, the mother of a child who'd been this precious warns other parents. You have to talk to your children about the 
what ifs. Just be more involved. Don't give them that privacy. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Well, looking ahead, the race for governor will be one of the biggest races during the upcoming November elections. And you'll have a chance to hear from both Democratic challenger Beto O'Rourke and incumbent Republican Governor Greg Abbott. It will happen September 30th, and we will air it right here on KSAT 12. The debate will take place the border town of Edinburgh, where immigration is expected to be one of the hot topics of discussion, or Steve Spreester, he will be part of the panel of questionnaires. Last night was an emotional one at the Honey Bowl in Uvalde. The stands were packed as the Coyotes won their home opener against Eagle Pass win 34 to 28. That's right. It was the first high school football game in Uvalde since the tragedy at Robb Elementary in Maine. Case at 12's Andrew Seeley was the sideline reporter for our live stream last night and has more. We knew Friday night in Uvalde was going to be special, but what we got on the field was even more remarkable. Game tied at 28 late in the fourth quarter. The Coyotes rallied thanks to an incredible play from Jonathan Jimenez, cutting back against the grain to set up the game-winning touchdown with 17 seconds left on the clock. He's coming back. He's coming back. How did he break out of that pile? He's got room to run. He's got blockers in front, including the quarterback. He's out of the 40, the 35, the 30. Oh, he made the inside step. He's running step, out of gas. And he's out of bounds at the 10-yard oh. line. It wasn't supposed to be a cutback. I thought it was over. I turned, I turned to our offensive coordinator and said, we're going to run it out and go to overtime. And next thing I know, the little fart's running down our sideline. So JJ's a great athlete, and when he sees it and gets in the open field, I just hoping nobody was going to block in the back or something like that because once he gets loose, he's always got a chance. What happened next was almost a foregone conclusion, but it was no less spectacular. 17 seconds remaining. Can they pull off this incredible victory? And into the end zone they go. And what a God! Touchdown, Uvalde! Number Devin. five, Devin Franklin with the reception led perfectly by Brody Carnes for the touchdown. Junior John Elizondo ended the game with a sack on the next drive and on a night that honored the 50th anniversary of the Coyotes' 1972 state championship, Uvalde played like champions to earn the 600th win in program history. Came out here and we fought. We fought our hardest, but we never gave up. And, you know, that was just what this town needed. And these needed this win. It's an amazing place to live, an amazing place to coach. That was crazy. And now, you know, with all the distractions today, the way they played, especially the second half, and to come back like that, I feel like you can play with anybody now. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Andrew Seeley. Ah, uh, chills. Congratulations, guys. All right, meanwhile, the Houston Texans, they're paying tribute to the Uvalde community this NFL season. So head coach Levy Smith and two players surprised the Uvalde High School football varsity team with an in-person visit Thursday night and Friday morning, and the team will wear Uvalde Strong helmet decal for their home opener against the Indianapolis Colts on September 11th. And if you were at the game last night, Texans cheerleaders and the mascot were in town for the first football game of the Honey Bowl. And Jonathan, I know we talked about it. We were watching it on Instagram and online. It was wonderful hearing Greg and Larry do it the commentary. Was. You can tell that they were like oh, trying yeah. not to get emotional and excited. I was getting emotional just watching it now. That single-handed catch. Oh, chills. Goodness, chills. Yeah, all the feels. Love oh, it. Time and temperature, 640 and 78 degrees. Well, still to come on GMSA, if you're looking for something fun to do with your family on a budget, we have you covered those ideas coming up in just a few minutes. And millions of people are taking to the skies this weekend. How extreme weather could throw a wrench in some people's plans? 78 degrees at 648. What are our rain chances? What can we expect this Saturday, this Labor Day weekend? Sarah Spivey will have our forecast when we come back. Well, this morning, the holiday rush is on as millions of travelers look to get away for the Labor Day weekend. And right now, airports across the country are busy, but extreme weather could slow things down. CNN's Isabel Rosales tells us why. Chaotic summer air travel testing the best of us. It's really tricky. You show up, you've got your bags packed, you're ready to go, you've got a plan, and like that, it can just change. Bad weather and staffing shortages plaguing air travel. Thousands of flights canceled since June 1st, according to FlightAware. It's, it's staggeringly frustrating because you can be there about ready to board and it's like, God, not again. Hope for Labor Day weekend. Some industry experts cautiously optimistic about air travel. A lot of the airlines have really upped their game. 
Thursday's air traffic went relatively smooth, with only about 1% of flights canceled per flight aware. In a rare piece of good travel news, experts also predicting a smoother fall travel season with fewer air travel disruptions. Extreme weather, also a factor this holiday weekend. More than 45 million people across at least seven states under heat alerts. So our forecasts are definitely calling for really high temperatures. Firefighters rush to the hospital for heat-related injuries. Some parts of California could see temperatures rise as high as 115 degrees. We are anticipating uh, this extreme heat to be a length and duration, the likes of which we haven't experienced in some time. Saving energy. Residents in the state asked to reduce electricity usage during peak hours to not overwhelm the power grid. Electric car drivers told to avoid charging up. It's going to require us to extend our thinking and our imagination. I'm Isabel Rosales reporting. And it was for a weekend. Hi. Hey, guys. Yeah, speaking of the weekend, you know, there is going to be a Plenty of opportunities for rain this weekend, but I do have to caution everybody. It's not going to rain everywhere all weekend long, right? Just like the last couple of rain events, there are going to be pockets of rainfall out there, some of which could be heavy. Let's take a look at the state of Texas right now. The first thing I want to show you is that if you are planning on traveling east to Houston, south to the valley, south to Corpus Christi, you may just run into some rain uh, throughout uh, your travels this morning. So just use caution on the roads. Otherwise, we've got a low pressure system up to our northeast, high pressure system up to our northwest. And that's what's going to increase our rain chances locally because there's really nothing blocking showers and storms from developing. So we are going to have that chance for some showers and storms. Right now, though, it is quiet around San Antonio. We expect a quiet start to your Saturday. The first half is going to be pretty quiet as we get into the afternoon. That's when our rain chances are going to increase. As I mentioned, if you're planning on trying to spend any time by the coast this weekend, Rockport, Corpus Christi, Port Lavaca area, it is going to be fairly rainy this weekend. So not a great weekend for Labor Day travels across the coast. Elsewhere, up near Rock Springs, we've got some showers and storms right now. Let's go ahead and check it out out near Rock Springs, right over the city of Rock Springs, especially the western part. That's where we've got some heavier downpours early this morning. And throughout the overnight hours, it has been raining in Del Rio, but that rain has moved south into parts of Maverick County. Right now, just some light rain and around San Antonio itself. As I mentioned, it is quiet. It's going to be a quiet start to the day today. But as we head into the afternoon hours, notice that there will be pockets of showers and storms. Overall coverage is only is about 60%. So there's a good chance that you're going to get some rain in your backyard, about a 60% coverage there. And again, wherever the rain sets up, it will be heavy at times. Uh, so we'll We'll have to monitor for some localized flooding issues as we head into the overnight hours. We're really only going to see some light rain around San Antonio and some light rain to start off your Sunday as well. But notice that the heavier of the rains will have pushed south on Sunday, especially in the morning. And as we transition into the afternoon. It's going to be pretty much a, a gray and damp start to your Sunday. A few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon on Sunday and about a 40% chance for a downpour Sunday afternoon. So again, the rain this weekend is going to be pretty random wherever it sets up. But here's some things that I want you to know. Here's what you need to plan for today afternoon rain scattered in nature. It will not rain everywhere, but wherever it does, there could be some heavy rain. Sunday, lighter rain, especially in the morning. And for Labor Day itself, yes, a few downpours are possible, but the rain chance is slightly less than today and tomorrow. Here's what you should be watching for and what I will be watching for too. Wherever that heavy rain sets up, I'll be watching for some localized flooding. And if you have plans outside today, and tomorrow and on Monday. Just remember that phrase when thunder roars go indoors because lightning can strike miles away from a storm. So plan to maybe have a plan B just in case you have some outdoor plans this weekend. Right now it's 78 degrees. It feels like 81. It's very humid. Elsewhere 74 in Kerrville. Good morning in Pleasanton. It's 76. 78 in Gonzales. 76 in Uvalde and 79 in Catula. Here's a summary of everything I just said for the day today. 
fairly quiet uh, until about noon. It'll be 86 degrees and then on the radar there will be 60% coverage of showers and storms. Let's take a look at the tropics. I plan I promise to look at the tropics. We do have two tropical storms. Danielle has been reduced from a hurricane to a tropical storm and tropical storm Earl going to be avoiding Puerto Rico and uh, heading out into the north uh, central Atlantic there. Uh, as for the forecast, just a reminder this weekend we're going to be dodging some rain. Highs will only be in the mid to upper 80s of improvement there when it comes to the heat. And then as we head into next week, temperatures rise and rain chances go down. Jonathan, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. All right, 650 and 78 degrees. And up next, if you're looking for some fun on a budget, we've got ideas for you and your family. That's still ahead. Welcome back. If you're looking for something different and fun to do with the kids, but the entertainment budget is super tight, no worries. Yep, that's because 12 on your side to Marilyn Moritz shows us places to go and things to do on the cheap. Olguita Pila is always looking for fun things to do with her daughters, but on a dime. Prices going up have affected us making any kind of decisions and trying to figure out what can we do that's free, cheap, easy, and close by. Whether it's weekends or after school, there are entertaining things you can do, often for free, like going to a museum. If you receive SNAP benefits, you can get free or reduced admission to over 900 museums through a program called Museums for All. Want to take the kids to a live event? On websites like Eventbrite and allevents.in, you can find free concerts or classes, like a kid's break dance class. Or maybe you'd like to teach your kids how to help the community and give back. On volunteermatch.org, you can find ways the family can volunteer together locally. Rainy days make for good family movie watching. With sites like Canopy and Hoopla, you can access loads of movies and TV shows for free with just your library card. You can access both on several different streaming devices. And if you don't have one, the Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K Max is a good value at $55. All inexpensive ways to spend priceless family time. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And we do have some breaking news from NASA. Teams have stopped flowing liquid nitrogen into that rocket as a leak has been detected in the engine cavity teams are troubleshooting by warming up the area standby for updates so we don't know if this means that their launch has been delayed or not but it sounds like there's going to be some potential delays here that's right that's right that's just now coming through uh, we'll definitely give you updated as more information is made available time and temp right now 65 78 degrees here's what's coming up on good morning america Coming up on GMA, dangerous heat in the West as that Northern California wildfire blazes on, leaving several people injured and multiple homes destroyed. And the warning to those in range of those triple digit temperatures this Labor Day weekend. Plus, that urgent search underway in Memphis for a mom who went missing on Friday during her early morning jog. What we know about the apparent kidnapping as police investigate and seek the public's help. And Serena Williams taking a final tennis and beyond. It's all ahead right here on GMA. Don't expect, expect much rain until this afternoon around San Antonio. Coverage will be about 60%. We'll start off tomorrow damp and gray with some morning light rain and into Monday for Labor Day itself. Just a few downpours are possible. So really the key word is we'll be dodging rain this weekend. It's not like it's going to be raining all weekend long. All right. Thank you so there much, you Sarah Spivey. So much. Hey, coming up at 8 a.m. We're going to have an update to that Artemis launch, whether it's being delayed or it's good to go. We'll keep you updated in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. All right, four hours, 46 minutes and 51 seconds. You're taking a live look at Cape Canaveral, Florida, where NASA is counting down to their launch of the Artemis 1 rocket. Will they have any delays? Will things go smoothly? We'll keep an eye out on it throughout GMSA. And taking a look outside, we have some clouds in the distance, but will there be rain later today and throughout the weekend? Sarah, we'll have that forecast. Good morning. It's Saturday, September 3rd. Jonathan Cotto in the house with That's us. Right. So good to have you, Jonathan. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's a pleasure to be here. Always a good time. Well, good to have you, Sarah. I yeah. want to toss to our new AMS certified meteorologist. Hey, Congratulations, thank girl. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, fun uh, per 
personal and professional achievement for me. Uh, but today we are going to be fairly quiet for most of the day, but in the afternoon, some showers and storms are going to develop. Let's take a look outside right now with live cam. It is 79 degrees, feels like 83, winds are calm and it is humid. Dew points in the mid 70s, which means that that high humidity uh, is, is making it feel hotter than what thermometer actually reads. So as we look at the day today, it is going to be quiet until the afternoon. It's in the afternoon and early evening hours that we're going to have uh, pockets of showers and storms out there. The chance for rain and coverage should be about 60%. Temperatures today will be limited in the 80s. We'll have east winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. In fact, all weekend long, we are going to have at least a chance for rain. It's not going to rain every day all weekend long at every place, but there is a chance for rain tomorrow. Uh, some light rain, especially in the morning, and a few downpours are possible for your Monday, for your Labor Day as well. Coming up, I'm going to show you the future cast and what you can expect in just a a few minutes, Jonathan and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating after sh two shootings overnight that left one man dead in an apartment complex. This happening on the city's northeast side. The shooting happened just before midnight at the Alamo Estates apartment complex that's near Walsham Road. Police say there were several people that got into a fight, leading to a shooting that left one man dead. Police are still searching for those suspects. Shortly after, there was another shooting. This time, a woman was shot, taken to the hospital. Police say these two shootings are not related. And a woman is dead this morning after she was hit by a vehicle on the city's northeast side. This all unfolding around 1.30 this morning on Loop 410 near the Harry Wurzbach exit. That's where police say they found the woman lying in the middle of the highway. Now she died at the scene. The driver who'd hit her did not stop to help. Well, the Houston Texans continue to honor the victims of Robb Elementary in that shooting in Uvalde. Now, players and coaches surprised the high school's football team with an in-person visit ahead of their game last night. Now, the team announced players will wear a Uvalde strong decal on their helmets for their home opener against the Indianapolis Colts. That game will be on Sunday, September 11th. Football players and team officials have also donated a total of $400,000 to the Robb school memorial fund with the goal of helping the community of Uvalde heal. And then Friday night lights in Uvalde much different this year. The stands were packed emotions running high as a high school football team was set to play last night. And the team got set to play its first game at home since the Robb Elementary School tragedy. Not the same and you always kind of feel like a little bit heavy hearted about everything. Now, as fans walked into the stadium and support the Coyotes, they did it knowing many families and friends are still very much hurting. But win or lose, the team taking the field was a moment for the community to get away from everything that the town has gone through. The only word I could describe about this community is grit and being resilient. And when you born and raised here, it's just about bleeding that maroon and white. Before kickoff, there were 21 seconds of silence to honor the 21 Robb Elementary School victims. Now, fans have a lot to celebrate this morning after a nail biter over Eagle Pass win, the final score 34 to 28. Such an emotional game to watch. KSAT 12's Andrew Seeley was a sideline reporter for our live stream of the game. He has a recap of all the action. We knew Friday night in Uvalde was going to be special, but what we got on the field was even more remarkable. Game tied at 28 late in the fourth quarter. The Coyotes rallied thanks to an incredible play from Jonathan Jimenez, cutting back against the grain to set up the game-winning touchdown with 17 seconds left on the clock. He's coming, back. He's coming back. How did he break out of that pile? He's got room to run. He's got blockers in front, including the quarterback. He's out of the 40, the 35, the 30. Oh, he made he's, the inside he's running step. Out of gas. He's out of bounds at the 10-yard oh. line. It wasn't supposed to be a cutback. I thought it was over. I turned I turned to our offensive coordinator and said, we're going to run it down and go to overtime. And next thing I know, the little fort's running down our sideline. So JJ's a great athlete, and when he seasons and gets in the open field, I just hope nobody was going to block in the back or something like that because once he gets loose, he's always got a chance. What happened next was almost a foregone conclusion, but it was no less spectacular. 17 seconds remaining. Can they pull off this incredible victory? And into the end zone they go, and it's gone! Touchdown, Uvalde! 
Number Devin. five, Devin Franklin with the reception led perfectly by Brody Carnes for the touchdown. Junior John Elizondo ended the game with a sack on the next drive and on a night that honored the 50th anniversary of the Coyotes 1972 state championship, Uvalde played like champions to earn the 600th win in program history. Came out here and we fought. We fought our hardest, but we never gave up. And you know, that was just what this town needed. And these needed this win. It's an amazing place to live, an amazing place to coach. That was crazy. And now, you know, with all the distractions today, the way they played, especially the second half, and to come back like that, I feel like you can play with anybody now. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Andrew Seeley. That one-handed catch, Jonathan. Oh, I get emotional chills. every time, Sarah. I know. I have to be honest. Well, time is 8.06, temperature 78 degrees. Well, Labor Day weekend, it's here. If you plan on taking the boat out, we have some reminders of how to be safe and follow Texas state laws. September is Hunger Action Month. Ahead on GMSA, we'll tell you about what challenges the San Antonio Food Bank is facing right now. Tuesday marks the first day of school for Uvalde CISD, and we want to hear your messages of hope for the community. Right now, head to ksat.com. You can share your thoughts for the new school year, and be sure to tune in Tuesday morning. We will have live team coverage. I'll be out there along with Mark Austin. We're going to be live on GMSA all morning long, and we may share your responses during our newscasts. Look for this story on our homepage. And taking a look outside, the sun is starting to make its way out. Not so much traffic. It's 78 degrees. We're going to be checking out that forecast later with Sarah. September is Hunger Action Month, and the San Antonio Food Bank has its hands full, trying to get more and more stomachs full. With that inflation, with inflation and rising food and fuel costs, not only are local families hurting more financially, but the food bank's mission has become that much more expensive. Max Massey explains what the food bank is now facing and how you can help. It's just choosing to do something. Hunger Action Month is this 30-day window that just says, hey, doesn't matter what you do, do something. The San Antonio Food Bank has been a staple of our community over the years. And this month, September in particular, it is crucial for the food bank's mission. With inflation and, and just the economy kind of tightening up a little bit, we're seeing that number now just over 100,000 people a week. And so it's almost back to what it was at the onset of the pandemic, which has us alarmed. We're seeing more people. And to be honest, the supply isn't keeping up. The mission of feeding hope and fighting hunger, it's getting more and more difficult with these rising costs. It's, it's everywhere we turn around, the cost of distributing food and the supply chain logistics are just at an all time high. Families are struggling and the food bank is asking for your help. It's about people getting the food that they need for themselves and their loved ones. As life becomes more and more expensive for families around our country and here at home, this month is about putting our community on notice. At the San Antonio Food Bank, we're just encouraging people to take action. That hope is an action and there's little things we could all do to help nourish our community. During Hunger Action Month, there are so many ways to help out. You can donate food, you can volunteer, you can help fill the empty shelves, or you can just fill a Ziploc bag and give food to people in need. Let's do something, San Antonio. Let's, let's all make a resolve to, to be kinder, to be nicer, to express love, to give hope, and to use hope as an action as a way. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. So if you're looking to get involved, scan the QR code on your screen. That will take you to KSAT.com where we have a list of the 12 most wanted food items that the Food Bank and the RBFCU are collecting. So you'll also find details on where you can drop off any donations throughout the month of September. There are more than 25 locations, so you're sure to find a place close to you. Well, it's Labor Day weekend and Texas Park and Wildlife officials want to make sure you're staying safe if you're planning to get out on the water. So remember, Texas state laws say life jackets must be available for everyone on a boat or paddle craft and they are required for kids under the age of 13. So you can also expect Texas game wardens to be out in full force this weekend monitoring for anyone operating a boat under the influence 
Another tip, check the weather because parts of San Antonio and our surrounding areas could see some rain this weekend. Isn't that right, Sarah? That's right. And remember, when thunder roars, go indoors. You do not want to be on the water when there's lightning and thunder out there. Now, uh, today, most of the day is going to be quiet, guys. We're really not going to see the rain uh, on the radar until later this afternoon and into the evening. So if you have some outdoor plans up until about a little after lunch, you should be just fine. Okay, let's take a look outside right now. You can see that we're dealing with the first light of the day here. Mostly cloudy skies, 79 degrees. Feels like 83. It is humid outside with dew points in the 70s. Taking a look at the radar right now, and you'll notice it is quiet. It is very quiet around San Antonio. We're not seeing much, but if you've planned to take a trip to the coast this weekend. Know that for Corpus Christi, Rockport, Port Lavaca, Port Aransas, those areas, the forecast looks pretty rainy for this weekend. Showers and storms, and you can see that more are working their way onshore from the Gulf of Mexico as well. Now, in the overnight hours, we saw quite a bit of rain for areas across the Edwards Plateau and near Del Rio. Here's a look at the rainfall. Rock Springs, north of Rock Springs, radar estimated rainfall of five inches. Why am I showing you this? Well, because we do have viewers in Rock Springs, but also because uh, this kind of rain where the concentrated downpours are fairly isolated, that's the kind of rain that we're going to have this afternoon. Not everyone will see rain this afternoon, but those that do will get quite a bit of it. And, and over in Del Rio, another two to four inches of radar estimated rain. But again, it is quiet right now around San Antonio. So let me take you through the future cast. Here's what you can expect again. After about 4 p.m., 3, 4 p.m., that's when we'll see pockets of rain around the San Antonio metro area. Coverage should be about 60 percent. You can see that that continues until the later afternoon and early evening hours. And then as we head into the overnight hours after the sun sets, we'll see some light rain around San Antonio with heavier rain pushing to the south. So your KSAT 12 hour forecast, not much going on out there until the afternoon. We'll be at 86 at noon. And then in the afternoon, our temperatures will be in the 80s. Even if you do not see rain, the rain cooled air will allow for temperatures to fall. And again, it's after 3 p.m. that we see our best chance for showers and storms around San Antonio. And even into this evening, some light rain will continue as temperatures fall into the 70s. So as I showed you out near Rock Springs, Anywhere in this darker green color has the potential for pockets of heavy rain that could produce localized flooding. I'll be watching out for that. I'll be here all day long. And then as we head into Sunday, some light rain is likely in the morning. It's going to be a pretty damp start to the day on Sunday and pretty gray. The heavier rains will be well south of San Antonio toward Catula and Pleasanton. And even as we head into the lunch hour, some light rain could linger too. So fairly gray day on Sunday. And even in the afternoon on Sunday, there could be one or two uh, pockets of heavier rain too. So the afternoon rain chances is about 40% on Sunday. Just to summarize everything I said in the afternoon and evening today, we'll have a good chance for some scattered downpours, then some light rain tomorrow in the morning hours, especially with some pockets of downpours in the afternoon. And even on Labor Day itself, even though the rain coverage will be less, about 40%, we could still see a few downpours. So how much rain are we, we thinking well widespread around San Antonio up to half an inch of rain. There will be pockets where that will be greater as I showed you earlier near Rock Springs, but widespread through Labor Day about half an inch is a safe bet around San Antonio up to an inch in areas south of San Antonio and like near Pleasanton. And then it's really going to be Laredo area that has the potential for some a very, very heavy rains up to about three inches of rain down near Laredo. If you're planning on traveling there for the holiday week, Weekend. I know a lot of us have family members down in Laredo. As for uh, the weekend, again, just to remind you, scattered downpours are possible throughout this weekend. Keep that case out weather authority at handy. Next week, we're going to see our rain chances go down and our temperatures will go up. Coming up in the forecast, I'm going to have a look at the tropics in the next half hour. Jonathan, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We know it's Labor Day weekend. A lot of folks are going to be heading out to the lakes, to the great outdoors, so plan accordingly. And be safe. All right, 818 and 79 degrees. And are you planning on heading to the movies today? If you are, you're in luck because it's National Cinema Day. We'll tell you what that means and which theaters are participating. 
I had a dream the other night that I won the lotto, but then I like was getting chased by people and I woke up like, <laughs> like Beautiful freaking dream. out. Yeah, it, I don't know. Here are your lotto numbers. Pick three, four, seven, five, fireball three, daily four, zero, nine, seven, six, fireball two. And catch five, that's three, five, six, 15, 18. And your Mega Millions, Texas Lottery numbers are 39, 40, 52, 60, 67, power play 20. We'll be right back. Well, good news if you're going to the movies today. It's National Cinema Day, and the theaters across the country are offering $3 tickets. Regal and AMC are taking part in their offering deals on concessions as well. An actress Jane Fonda has been diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and is undergoing chemotherapy. The 84-year-old made the announcement on social media and expressed optimism that is, quote, a very treatable cancer. Fonda wrote that around 80% of patients diagnosed with this form of cancer survive. The two-time Academy Award winner for Best Actress did not address her ongoing professional commitments, but she says she plans to continue her climate activism. We wish you best, Jane Fonda. Um, I actually, I just saw a meme that she did a quote and she was like, this is a learning moment for me and cancer is teaching me. Oh, I bet, I bet. She is absolutely phenomenal. Monster-in-law, one of my favorites. Yeah. She was wonderful. <laughs> All right, time is 823, 79 degrees. The day's heating up. All right, we're getting hungry here on GMSA. After the break, David Elder takes us to New Braunfels for some seafood fondue. Keep it right here for a preview of Texas Eats. Yeah. And I want to start out this one right here, the seafood fondue. Yes, sir, that's our best-selling appetizer. It's got a little bit of spinach, some mushrooms, some crawfish, and some shrimp, all with our creamy Thibodeau sauce, and that's paired with our beautiful garlic bread. Grab a little piece, we're going in. All right, cheers to cheers. you, the seafood fondue. Bro. Oh my love. The seafood fondue is definitely the starter that you have to get when you come out here to the restaurant. It's loaded up, it's got those seafood elements in there, plus mushrooms and all that cheesy, creamy goodness. Garlic bread on the side, made in house. I mean, it is the only way to start your day out here at McAdoo's. I don't know, is that how you'll start your day, Sarah? No, I don't think so. I'm, I'll, try, I'll, try, I'll try other things on the menu. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, time is 827, 79 degrees. All right, we're going to take a look at Cape Canaveral. This is live in Florida where NASA is counting down to the launch of their Artemis 1 rocket. Earlier, we had an update that there was something going on with the hydrogen, and then they stopped it, and then they put the hydrogen back. So, no, so far, no word on any delays. Looks like everything's going smoothly for now, but we're going to keep you updated throughout GMSA. All right, taking a look outside with the roads, Trans Sky, keeping an eye of any situations pop up, we'll let you know about them. And good morning. It's 8.30 on Saturday. Sarah, it's such a pleasure being with you. I know a lot of people are making plans this weekend. The weather might be an issue. Can you check in with Sarah to see? I know. Yeah. Sarah. I Listen. My neighbors were like, oh, like we're going to head down to the coast. And then I saw the rain for I was like, no. Yeah, the coast, it's going to be a little, especially near Corpus Christi Bay, Rockport, yeah. Port Aransas. It's going to be a pretty rainy weekend down there. And, and for us today, really the first part of the day is going to be quiet. But throughout the weekend, you may need to dodge a few showers and storms. It's a bit of a, a double-edged sword, right? We want the rain. We need the rain. But it is Labor Day weekend. Speaking of, I want to show you your poolside forecast today. A lot of people are going to be trying to enjoy Enjoy the pool. The, the time that you'll need to watch out for is after lunch. That's when we could see some downpours uh, scattered, so only a 60% chance for coverage. There will be those who get rain and those that miss out. But still, the big thing to get across is that if you do have plans outside this afternoon, remember, when thunder roars, go indoors.
that's that uh, catchy little saying we say because lightning can strike many miles away from a storm. So today our rain coverage is about 60%. We're going to see some light rain tomorrow, especially in the morning, and then the coverage goes down to 40%, but the chance is still there on Monday on Labor Day itself. I'll be talking more about our rain chances in detail, showing you the future cast and what we expect around the San Antonio metro area, plus a look at the tropics. Jonathan, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Now to monkeypox cases here in Bear County. The Metro Health Department is reporting four new cases, bringing the total up to 33. So we know that monkeypox spreads through direct contact, close contact with the rash scabs or body fluids from an infected person. We have information on how to prevent from getting this virus and vaccine availability. Head to ksat.com. Now, the need for blood remains high in our community and area washed up locations are giving you a chance to donate all weekend long. It's happening today, tomorrow and Monday. Donors who take part in the three day event will receive a free car wash voucher worth $20 and a $20 gift certificate. So now you will need to make an appointment to donate. And we have that link posted for you on our website, ksat.com. Well, the new Jackie Robinson Museum opening in Manhattan. That's right. Two of the Dodgers star players carrying on the legacy of one of baseball's most enduring trailblazers. ABC's Zareen Shaw is getting an exclusive first look. Among the exhibits at the Jackie Robinson Museum, a wall covered with fan mail from his days as a Brooklyn Dodger. Some of Robinson's very fans going on to become Dodgers themselves. The rookie gets a hold of it. Hours before the museum's public opening, the Dodgers, including star players Mookie Betts and David Price, got a sneak peek at the man whose legacy they are continuing. It was just a super special to come in and see the museum that we've been talking about for so long and see uh, the legacy and really see more in depth everything that uh, Jackie was and is. And I did a lot of book reports on Jackie, you know, it, it got to the point where it was easy, you know, to get to come in here and experience this and not only to see the timeline of Jackie, but to see the timeline of the United States, you know, right there with it. The display is going far beyond the ball field. People know about his athletic prowess. They know about his wonderful integration of baseball, but they don't know about the many other facets of his life. His involvement with politicians to make sure change was happening three times. He testified before Congress. So you have to to walk through that section of the museum before you get to what many people will come to see, which is, you know, his sports career. 75 years after Robinson became the first black player in the MLB, breaking the color barrier, challenges still exist. What issues do you guys think still exist today? You know, I like to see, you know, more black representation. We just have to continue to, to be in the front office or, or be managers or be third base coaches. Jackie once saying in a speech he wished he could see a black manager. Just two years after his death, Frank Robinson became the manager of the Cleveland Indians. And now Dave Roberts with the Dodgers is currently one of two black managers in the major league. You did his legacy right. How does that feel? Hear those words from Jackie and to say, oh my goodness, I'm kind of fulfilling what his dream, one of his dreams was is mind blowing. Roberts is determined to make baseball's next 75 years even stronger. So now the question is, how do we get kids of color playing our game? Having David and Mookie speak and people seeing people that look like them uh, want to play this game and want to be the next David Price or the next Mookie Betts. That's what we're shooting for. And the museum opens to the public on Monday. And by the way, the Dodgers aren't just any team walking through the Jackie Robinson Museum. They currently have the best record in baseball. And according to ABC's own 538 predictions, they currently are the favorite to win the World Series. Zorin Shah, ABC News. Well, also trending on KSAT.com, dolphins, specifically three bottlenose dolphins. They were released into the open sea in Indonesia after being confined for the amusement of tourists. So their names, Johnny, Rocky, and Rambo. So the dolphins were rescued three years ago from a tiny pool at a hotel resort. They were kept in a sanctuary to heal and get better over the last three years. And they were recently released into the open sea. After they were released, they circled around that sanctuary where they were kept just one more time.
And trending now on KSAT.com, listen to this zombie deer disease in the Texas Hill Country. It's officially known as chronic wasting disease, and Texas Park and Wildlife says it was found at a deer breeding facility in, Fred in the Fredericksburg area. Experts say it's a potentially deadly neurological disease, and some of the signs include stumbling, weight loss, excessive thirst, and drooping ears. But the problem is, some of these symptoms may not appear until long after the animal is infected. Right now, experts say there is no evidence that CWD poses any risk to humans. You can read more about this story right now by heading over to our website, kset.com. That's terrifying. This, Very terrifying. The name, zombie deer, that's zombie deer disease, that's the last thing we need. And also, if you see zombies out in the wild, I know there's a lot of them on the bike trails. Don't them. <laughs> I see a lot of people petting. Don't touch them. No, don't touch don't them. Touch Let them. them do their thing. <laughs> well, right now it's 837, 79 degrees. This morning on GMSA, we're celebrating one of our very own. Look, look how beautiful she looks. After the break, we're talking to Sarah Spivey about her big accomplishment. And taking a look outside, beautiful San Antonio, those clouds in the distance. There may be a chance for some showers this weekend. Sarah will have all the latest. All right, this morning, some big congratulations are in order for my girl, Sarah Spivey. That's right. She is now officially AMS certified. Sarah. I did my research looking into this. I know a lot of hard work and also testing winters. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Oh my goodness, yes. I feel so honored to be awarded a certification, certified broadcast meteorologist by <laughs> the American Meteorological Society. So in order to be a certified broadcast meteorologist, you have to work on TV for a few years. You have to, of course, have all of the credentials of being a degreed meteorologist. You have to take a written exam Exam, and I have to be peer reviewed by other certified broadcast meteorologists. So it's quite the process and I'm very honored to, to now hold that CBM. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been hearing from Sarah over the last year about the tests, about submitting things. I'm so proud of you, Oh, Sarah. gosh, thank Absolutely. you so much. And, and yeah, a lot of people have been asking me, so does this mean you weren't a meteorologist before? No, 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 no <laughs> we, I was. It's just now we, uh, I'm certified by the American Broadcast. And, and some meteorologists American never end up certified. getting certified. Uh, it's not like something you have to do, but yeah. it, it, it's a nice official be like, hey, I'm AMS certified. It's a nice feather in your So now when we talk sure. about the Sarahs, we can refer to the certified Sarah. <laughs> and the one that's And the uncertified. <laughs> the uncertified Sarah. Sarah, you're certified in my book. You're I don't official. know what I'm certified in, but okay. <laughs> awesome lady. That's Thank you. you are. Okay, uh, yeah, let's so talk about the weather this weekend. So while it will not be raining all weekend long, we do have the opportunities for rain here and there. First, I want to talk about today. Again, don't expect much on the radar until uh, uh, this afternoon and early evening. As, as you can see on the satellite radar across the state of Texas, uh, if you're planning on traveling out east to Houston or south toward the valley, know that you're going to be running into some showers and storms as you do so. Here's our setup. We've got a high pressure system over the Four Corners region and a trough of low pressure uh, to the north and to the east. So this is going to funnel any kind of storms that develop to our north south into San Antonio and it is quiet right now around San Antonio. I can't stress that enough. Uh, we are however going to be seeing better rain chances this afternoon and evening. Let's talk about the coast because if you're planning on taking a trip down to Corpus Christi, Port Aransas, Rockport, even Port Lavaca area, it is going to be a fairly rainy weekend. Again, you can see a band of thunderstorms is approaching Corpus Christi, Port Aransas, Corpus Christi Bay area. So not a, a great weekend, unfortunately, at the coast during this holiday weekend. And in the overnight hours, we've had rain for Rock Springs, Del Rio and Valverde County. But the rain around Rock Springs is now light. But what I want to show you is how much rain has fallen there in just the past 12 hours, up to five inches of rain northeast of Rock Springs and in the city of Rock Springs itself, about half an inch. That is a huge variation in rainfall in just over four miles there. Why am I showing you this? Well, because this kind of heavy downpours that are more isolated is what's possible around San Antonio throughout the day, throughout the weekend rather. 
And so as we look at the high res future cast, it is, as I mentioned, going to be quiet for most of the day. But in the afternoon, particularly after 3 p.m., that's when we're going to have spots of downpours. The coverage should be about 60%. You can see that that's possible through most of this afternoon, through most of the San Antonio metro area. But as we head into the overnight hours, we'll be looking at more of a light rain situation around San Antonio. And even into early tomorrow morning, we're going to start off pretty damp and gray for your Sunday. Light rain is possible in the morning hours with the heavier rain pushing to the south. Uh, and then even into around lunch, we could have spits and drizzle of light rain as well. Sunday afternoon, it's going to be dry for most folks, but there's a 40% chance for some more downpours on Sunday afternoon, as you can see in the future cast. So what should you plan for this weekend? Today, plan for scattered afternoon downpours, some of which could be heavy wherever the rain falls. Sunday, lighter rain, especially in the morning. And on Monday, there's about a 40% chance for a few downpours as well. What are we watching for? heavy rains resulting in localized flooding wherever that heavier rain falls. And even if you're not underneath a th shower or thunderstorm, if you hear thunder when thunder roars, go indoors. So have a plan B dot, uh, duck inside really quickly and then you can duck back outside uh, throughout this weekend. 79 degrees feels like 83 outside. It's 78 in Pleasanton, 80 in Catula, 74 in Kerrville, 77 in New Braunfels. And just to reiterate, quiet for most of the day today, but in the afternoon and evening, that's when we'll be uh, watching the radar very carefully. Scattered downpours possible. I promise to look at the tropics. We've got two systems out there in the Atlantic. We're approaching the peak of Atlantic hurricane season. We've only got through Danielle and Earl, D and E storms. So uh, it's been a fairly quiet season and, and most of these storms are not really gonna impact very many people there. So we'll keep you updated on the tropics, but really this weekend is a great weekend to have that KSAT Weather Authority app handy because the rain will be so scattered and random in nature. You'll wanna give it a check before you head out to do anything. Highs this weekend will only be in the mid to upper 80s. Pretty good. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Folks, there's your forecast. So plan accordingly as you head out this weekend. All right, it's 847 and 79 degrees. Now, vitamins, do they do the body good, but not enough of us are getting enough of them? After the break, some unique benefits and how to take your intake. How to up your intake. That's right. <laughs> All right, is, do they work? We'll let you know about that. Pick three, four, seven, five, fireball three, daily four, zero, nine, seven, six, Fireball 2. And cash 5, the numbers are 3, 5, 6, 15, and 18. Mega Millions, 39, 40, 52, 60, 67, Mega Ball 20, Mega Plier 2. Good luck. We'll be right, we'll be right back. Well, if you shun the sun, suffer from food allergies, don't get enough fruit and veggies, I definitely don't, it's likely you may be vitamin deficient. In fact, 46% of the U.S. adults aren't getting enough vitamin C. And according to the Cleveland Clinic, 42% of people are vitamin D deficient and 90% are not getting enough vitamin E. Getting too little of these essential vitamins can be dangerous, even life-threatening. David Sears shows us how much we need and how to get more of them. Feeling weak, trouble sleeping, blurry vision. All of these symptoms could be a sign you're not getting enough of these. Vitamin C is critical for our immune system. It also plays a vital role in joint health, mood, and promotes eye health. One in 20 people lack the recommended daily amount, even though many experts believe it's easy to get enough vitamin C just through a healthy diet. One orange or a cup of strawberries or raw broccoli gives you 100% of your vitamin C. I'm a medical doctor and I prescribe medicine, but I always like to take the natural approach whenever possible, and food is medicine. Vitamin D is critical for building and maintaining healthy bones, but about one billion people worldwide are deficient in it. A new study reveals a lack of vitamin D may be linked to an increased risk of dementia and stroke. The top vitamin D fortified foods include salmon, canned tuna, egg yolks, orange juice, and mushrooms. And how do you get your vitamin E? 
You can get your daily recommended amounts through foods like nuts, green vegetables, broccoli, and spinach, and vegetable oils. Your body needs it to boost its immune system. Some research even suggests vitamin E may delay progression of Alzheimer's disease, liver disease, and prostate cancer. It's best to take vitamins with meals that contain at least 10 grams of fat or more. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. Okay, so more vitamins. More vitamins. And Eat healthy. More exercise. Drink a lot of water. Yes. There you have it. Check, check, check. That's right. Time is 8:53, 79 degrees. I'm Mark Austin in Uvalde, where public schools are preparing to return to class. GMSA will have team coverage live beginning Tuesday, September 6th. Well, Tuesday marks the first day of school for Uvalde CISD, and we want to hear your messages of hope for the community. Right now on KSAD.com, you can share your thoughts for the new school year, and be sure to tune in Tuesday morning. We will have team coverage live from Uvalde all morning on GMSA. We may share your responses during our newscast. A look for this story on our homepage. All right, we're heading out to Cape Canaveral in Florida. This is a live look there where NASA Counting down to the launch of the Artemis 1 rocket in 3 hours, 50 minutes, and 29 seconds. We're going to keep an eye on it throughout GMSA. We know that launch was delayed earlier in the week. Will they have any delays today? We'll let you know and as soon as we find out. And folks, a reminder, the need for blood remains high in our community. And area washtub locations are giving you a chance to donate. All weekend long, donors who take part in the three-day event will receive a free car wash, voucher worth $20 and a $20 e-gift card. Now you will need to just make an appointment to donate. And we have that link posted for you on our website, kset.com. It's 857 and 79 degrees. We all know laughter can be the best medicine and we are serving it up big time here on GMSA. Ahead on our next hour, we'll introduce you to a YouTube prankster who is scaring the internet and us right here at KSAT 12. This morning on GMSA, we're taking a live look at Cape Canaveral in Florida where NASA has delayed the Artemis 1 rocket launch. We'll tell you what's going on and if we could see a liftoff today in just moments. Also this morning, a small plane crash in Houston turns deadly. We'll tell you what's happened overnight. Taking a look outside with live cam, 9 o'clock, 80 degrees. Will we see rain today? And what are our chances? Sarah Spivey, our newly AMS certified meteorologist, will have an update. Good morning. It's 9 o'clock on this Saturday, September 3rd. And Jonathan Cole right. in the house with us. Such a pleasure, such an honor to be here with the Sarahs and the newly certified <laughs> official Sarah Spivey. Sarah, I know folks are going to be heading out to camp to the lakes to the rivers yeah. what can they expect well you know there are going to be areas of rain especially this afternoon around san antonio but for the first part today it's going to be fairly quiet and just plain old humid take a look outside right now with live cam it is 80 cloudy degrees few peaks of sunshine every now and then feels like 85 because of the high humidity all right take a look at uh, temperatures in your neighborhood it's 76 in Yavali, 72 in Rock Springs, 78 in Hondo, 79 in Pleasanton. You can see the clouds moving in from the west, and you can see some clouds moving in from the south. It's 77 in Bulverde. Good morning in Bernie. It's 75, 75 in Rio Medina, 79 in Castroville, 80 at Simpson, and 81 in Con Converse. Of course, a lot of people are going to be grilling. Here's your grilling forecast for your Saturday. You're going to have to watch out later this afternoon. 40 to 60 percent coverage this afternoon with showers and storms. Temperatures today, though, will only be in the 80s. So what do you need to know this Labor Day weekend? Today afternoon, pockets of rain, scattered showers and storms. Sunday, tomorrow, lighter rain, especially in the morning. And on Monday, slightly less chance for rain. But the things we'll be watching out for are heavy uh, rains resulting in localized flooding. And remember, duck inside whenever you hear thunder. When thunder roars, go indoors. I'll show you that future cast and what you can expect coming up. Jonathan and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Topping your morning headlines, you're looking live at Cape Canaveral, Florida, and that's the Artemis 1, where NASA is making their final preparations for the rocket. Hopefully, 
going to happen later today. Fingers crossed. The expected launch of this mission is now just hours away following a five day delay as engineers work to plug hydrogen leaks on the rocket. It's the first step towards putting us back on the moon with an eye towards Mars. ABC's Gio Bonitas is at Cape Canaveral where thousands of people have gathered for the launch. This morning, we're just hours away from what NASA hopes will be a launch for the history books. Artemis One standing by, ready to roar off into the cosmos and send a spacecraft around the moon and back. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson watching the weather. I know what August is when it comes to rainstorms, so uh, with a little guarded uh, optimism. But Monday's scrub wasn't because of the weather. A scrub for today. One of the engines on the new SLS rocket, the Space Launch System, didn't cool down to the proper temperature. Nelson says it was just bad data, not a bad engine. You followed the physics instead of the sensor, particularly because this is a test sensor. Now NASA believes the most powerful rocket in the world is ready for liftoff to send the uncrewed Orion capsule around the moon and back to Earth to test it for astronauts like so. Anne McClain, who's in line to someday go to the moon. Astronaut, I'm excited that I'm going to be able to see something I've never seen before. The American people and the international community have committed an enormous amount of resources to this program, and we at NASA have a responsibility to get it right. Today's launch window window opens at 217 Eastern right in the middle of college football. I expect that a bunch of college football fans are going to be cheering at the top of their lungs when they see this Artemis flight take to the heavens. That was Gio Benitez reporting. Also in your headlines, a person involved in a small plane crash outside of Houston has died. The airplane was trying to land Thursday, coming in from Tennessee after a refueling stop in Louisiana. Radio chatter indicates the aircraft started experiencing problems in the sky. Something caused it to lose power, and it crashed about two miles away from Hooks Airport. Two of the three people on board are in the hospital in unknown conditions. On Capitol Hill, the Justice Department has released the full inventory of what FBI agents seized from former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. Over 11,000 documents were removed and 48 empty folders were labeled classified. The list shows some documents had classification markings ranging from confidential to top secret and were mixed with things like newspaper clippings, photographs, books and clothing in Trump's office alone. The DOJ alleges there were 43 empty folders seized with with classified markings. And tennis icon Serena Williams bid an emotional goodbye to the U.S. Open overnight with a close loss in the tournament's third round. It's likely the final singles match of her historic career. Thank you, Serena and Venus Williams. It was so nice to see minority women in the spotlight. Absolutely. And everything Serena did for the sport and just women in sports in general Absolutely. is incredible. Serena Williams, y'all. It's 9.06, 80 degrees. It's only getting warmer. All right, still to come this half hour, the UTSA Roadrunners, they're back and ready to defend their conference title. We'll have a preview of their season opener today at the Alamo Dome. And after the break, veterans groups are hoping for some help from Congress. Why a new bill could be the answer to disability for combat veterans. 80 degrees, 906 this morning. Uh, might see some clouds and some in, in your area. Sarah Spivey will let us know if we can expect rain throughout the day we come back. And looking ahead on Capitol Hill, when Congress returns from summer recess, veterans groups are hopeful a sweeping bill will be passed. The Major Richard Starr Act could send full disability and retirement pay to 50,000 combat veterans. It would allow more disabled veterans to receive full retirement and full disability pay, regardless of how many years they served. Current law requires 20 years of service for complete benefits. The bill is named for Army Major Richard Starr, who passed away last year from stage four lung cancer. And meanwhile, some veterans will soon be able to obtain abortions. Listen to this, no matter what state they live in, the Biden administration submitted a new rule allowing the VA health care system to provide abortions when the mother's life is at risk or in cases of rape or incest. Women will not be required to provide police reports or other evidence of rape or incest. The VA's federal mandate will overrule local and state laws. Once published in the Federal Register, the policy will go immediately into effect.
All right, it's 910, 80 degrees. Sarah Spivey, uh, you know, I haven't, allergies I feel like haven't really been a thing with the summer, but I've been kind of feeling a little like sneezy lately. Well, with the recent spotty rains, you know, molds has been an issue. And speaking of the pollen count, we just got it in. So check it out. Uh, molds are high today at 1400 and fall elm is low with some rain in the forecast over the next few days. That uh, number for the molds may just go up outside right now. Boy, you can see that humidity out in the air. Look on the horizon. You see how there's a bit of a haze. That's from how humid it is. Dew points are in the 70s. It's cloudy. It's 80 degrees, but it feels like 85 and for the first part of the day here it's going to be quiet we're not really going to have to worry about rain until the later afternoon and early evening hours but i do have to say unfortunately if you're planning on spending some time along the coast uh, this weekend it is going to be a rainy one you can see that a band of thunderstorms is starting to move onshore near corpus christi bay rockport port aransas and near port lavaca so unfortunately if you have been uh, planning to go to the coast know that it is going to be rainy. It is quiet though right now around San Antonio and again we're really not going to see a chance for rain until later on today. Here's a look at the high rise future cast this afternoon after 3 p.m. Spotty downpours about 60% coverage out there uh, during the afternoon today because of the random nature of these showers and storms and how they're going to be setting up. It's difficult to know exactly where the heaviest of the rains is going to fall, but what we do know is that if you do get a shower or storm, that rain could be heavy at times. So about 60% coverage this afternoon. Once we lose the daytime heating after sunset, we'll be looking at some light rain showers around San Antonio late tonight. So for your KSAT 12 hour forecast, quiet for this first part of the day. Temperatures will be in the 80s. Once we get into the afternoon, we're going to see scattered downpours develop 60% coverage. And even if you don't see the rain, you're likely going to get some rain cool air from some outflow boundaries that develop. So because of that, temperatures today should only top off in the mid to upper 80s and then into this evening we will be in the 70s with some light rain lingering after sunset. I do have to mention as I have earlier today, know that if you do get a shower or storm, there is a slight flash flooding risk. Pockets of heavy rain could produce localized flooding. I'll be keeping an eye on things throughout the day. As we transition from today into tomorrow for your Sunday in the morning, it's going to be damp and gray. Light rain will be around in the morning hours in San Antonio with a heavier rain pushing to the south and then gradually throughout the morning. We'll see that rain dissipate with the heavier rain to the south, even though we'll start off a little damp into the afternoon. We'll see some peaks of sunshine and not as much coverage as this afternoon, but tomorrow afternoon there will be a few spotty downpours as well. Coverage in the afternoon tomorrow will be about 40%. So to <laughs> summarize everything I said here in the afternoon today, 60% chance for scattered downpours tomorrow, mainly in the morning. We'll have some light rain with some opportunities in the afternoon here and there. And then even on Monday on Labor Day itself, a few downpours are possible. Should you cancel your outdoor plans? I'd say no, but just have a backup plan in case you're going to have to duck inside if you do hear thunder both today and tomorrow and even on Monday as well. As far as rainfall potential goes up to half an inch widespread is a safe bet around San Antonio, but there could be pockets of greater south of San Antonio up to one inch and then it's going to be the Laredo area Corpus Christi area that could see up to three inches of rainfall. Taking a look at that forecast, not uh, a Ideal forecast for Labor Day weekend, but many of us could still use some rain, so I'll take it. And then as we head into next week, rain chances go down, temperatures go up. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to talk about the tropics. Thank you so much. And like they say, a little rain never hurt anybody, but of course, plan accordingly for a safe weekend. Everyone be safe. All right, 914, 80 degrees still to come. David Elders takes us to a burrito shop serving up California style burritos right here in the Alamo City. That's next on Texas Eats. No, that's really my cup of tea. <laughs> all right, after the break, we all love a good laugh, especially here on GMSA, but a good laugh more often can actually save your life. We'll explain after this. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us here at KSAT. We are no strangers at laughing and we all know the saying laughter is the best medicine, but is it actually? I think it is. So according to the Mayo <laughs> Clinic, laughter helps not only in ways of relieving stress, but can also reduce pain. David Sears 
has the laughing story. Did you hear about the kidnapping at school? It's fine. He woke up. Whether it's delivered from your dad or someone more professional, a good laugh can do the body good. Studies show that laughter relaxes the whole body. A good hearty laugh relieves tension and stress, leaving your muscles relaxed for up to 45 minutes. It also decreases your heart rate and blood pressure, as well as produces hormones that work as natural painkillers. It can also help fight potential serious illness. Some laughs can help you lose weight. One study says laughing 15 minutes a day can burn 40 calories. And that may not sound like a lot, but that can add up to about four pounds a year. A good chuckle could also help women get pregnant. One study showed 16% of people trying to have a child were more likely to get pregnant when entertained by a medical clown. And the best news? Laughter may help you live longer. A study in Norway found people with a strong sense of humor outlive those who didn't laugh as much. So go ahead and laugh. It'll do your body good. <laughs> Don't feel like laughing? Even forcing yourself to laugh can be just as beneficial as the real thing. One study found incorporating bouts of simulated laughter into an exercise program helped improve older adults' mental health as well as their aerobic endurance. David Sears, KZ12 News. Oh my gosh. Listen, I, I'm always down for a good laugh, but same. losing four pounds a okay, year. Okay, I laugh a lot. And I'm not losing four pounds a year. I haven't seen it. I, I I'm might, not seeing those results, I and we're laughing. I, I, <laughs> laughing. Good All morning. right. It is 920 and 80 degrees. And still ahead, Labor Day weekend means it's time to bust out the grill. And today is a special reason to get things fired up. We'll tell you all about it coming up. It has exploded with popularity, especially the surf and turf burrito. Talk to me about what's inside. It has a carne asada, it's a USA choice beef, and then we have these jumbo large shrimp in here, guacamole, pico, our famous house sauce, and a lot of cheese and french fries. My goodness, you loaded this thing up. We did, we don't play. Now you have a lot of different sauces on the menu as well, including a hot sauce. Pour a little bit onto this one here. All right. Don't hurt me now. I won't, man. It does not wreck your palate. Cheers to you, the surf and turf with the house-made spicy sauce. Here we that's go. That's right. Oh, that's spicy. Man. That's spicy. It's good though. Give me some love. Man. Folks, are you ready for some football? The UTSA Roadrunners open the 2022 season against the number 24 ranked Houston today at the Alamo Dome. Houston is nationally ranked in the preseason at top 25. UTSA was ranked top 25 last season for the first time in the program's history. The Roadrunners spent six straight weeks in the polls until their first loss. Both UTSA and Houston finished 12-2 last season. The game kicks off this afternoon at 2.30 at the Alamo Dome. Now today is also a perfect day for the Roadrunner fans to break out the grill because it's National Tailgating Day. That's exciting. We all know tailgating traditionally happens on the tailgate of a truck or the trunk of a car near the stadium to party before a game. So although it's tough to pinpoint when the first tailgate party actually took place, many say it occurred on November 6th back in 1869 when fans gathered before the Rutgers Princeton game to talk, eat and cheer on their teams. National Tailgating Day debuted on the first Saturday of September 2016 to shine a spotlight on the tradition. What is your favorite tailgate food, Jonathan? Um, I would have to say the seafood fondue, Oh Sarah. my gosh, you're messing with me. <laughs> yeah. That was earlier on Texas Eats. That's the ultimate <laughs> tailgating dish. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. You're no. losing weight as you laugh. I'm losing just for weight the as I laugh, hopefully. As I'm like, oh, I like I like hot dogs. And I like, you know, a well, nice glass of beer when I tailgate. Goodness. Well, folks, the time is 926. Temperatures 80 degrees. Still ahead, 930. Record heat still wrecking parts of California and the Southwest. We'll look at how that could affect Labor Day travel for millions of Americans. And we've got the dramatic ending to Uvalde's first home game last night that celebrated more than just a return to football. Don't miss the highlights coming up next.
Welcome back. It's 930 on this beautiful Saturday morning, September 3rd. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. John Nicoto in studio. We've been having fun all morning. Uh, Sarah, I love that laughing story that we just <laughs> did, basically saying laughter can help you live longer. Mental yes. health. Can help you lose weight. I'm still not losing weight, Sarah. Well, but we have fun laughing we either way. We do. So, <laughs> yeah, we are going to be seeing a better chance for rain in the afternoon and evening tonight into tomorrow as well. I, I know it's Labor Day weekend and rain is not ideal, but we, we could use some rain, so it's nice to see that's in the forecast. First, though, let's take a look at the pollen count today. Molds are high past 1400 and fall elm is low. All right, and look at the satellite and temperatures. It's 80 degrees in San Antonio, 78 in Hondo, 81 in New Braunfels, 76 in Kerrville, 72 in Rock Springs, and 76 in Uvalde. As we zoom into the metro area here, you can see that the clouds are really pretty thick out there. It's going to be difficult for us to see too much sun today. 76 in Rio Medina, 75 in Bernie, 81 in New Braunfels, and 81 in Converse. Taking a look at today's forecast, quiet for the first half of the day. Temperatures will be in the 80s because of the cloud cover, and then into the afternoon 60% chance for uh, for pockets of rainfall out there today. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, per hour. More details on our rain chances this afternoon. And of course, I'll talk about uh, some rain in the forecast through the Labor Day weekend as well. Coming up, Sarah and Mac uh, back to actually Stephen. Stephen is going to take a look at the roads for us. The work continues in and around the Alamo City. Now that we're in the month of September, there's a few spots you want to be aware of road closures that you can expect. So we're going to start here off U87, otherwise known as Rigsby Road. Striping operations are actually current and you may have seen them already going on. But according to TxDOT, that will wrap up on Monday, September 19th. This will take place during the day, so 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. Drivers expect some alternating alternating lane closures in both directions from Roland Avenue to Loop 410. Let's head over to Loop 16 over on the northwest side of San Antonio, where a lot of work continues to take place for Loop 1604. This time, the barriers that you've probably seen out there will be relocated on Thursday, September 8th. And according to TxDOT, that work should wrap up on September 15th. It's overnight, so those late night owls or early bird commuters plan ahead because it's from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. The eastbound entrance ramp closure will be there uh, for at Lock and Terra Parkway. Let's take one last look here at I-10 over on the east side of Bear County, where barrier work will continue on Friday, September 9th and that should wrap up on September 12th. But keep in mind, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning is when you can expect a full closure of the westbound main lanes from File Road to Loop 1604. But you know where to find that information. You can grab those phones, open your camera app, scan the QR code by hitting the center of your screen. That will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page and that will have a list of all the closures taking place in and around the Alamo City. Thank you, Stephen. And you this morning, a woman is recovering at a hospital after part of a popular downtown Houston restaurant collapsed on her. The Houston Fire Department says it happened Friday night at the downtown aquarium restaurant. Officials say part of the outdoor uh, next to the aquarium ticket booth fell on the woman. The woman's injuries are considered non life threatening. The cause of the collapse is being investigated. Industrial engineers are working around the scene to pinpoint a cause. And also this morning, a fast moving wildfire in Northern California is forcing thousands of people from their homes. ABC's Alex Prashad is from is in Los Angeles with the story. This morning, the fast moving mill fire leaving destruction across Northern California. The flames destroying multiple homes and vehicles as the fire explodes to almost 4,000 acres. This video taken by firefighters rushing to respond. Traffic out of town backed up as nearly 7,500 residents try to flee. This, as temperatures continue to rise in the state, increasing the risk of power outages and heat-related illnesses. If you see anybody with any signs, even a little nausea, or your friend complains that they have a headache, if you know you have an older neighbor next door, go check in on them. And in Southern California, the city of Glendale dealing with another scorcher. If you had any plans of doing any sort of outdoor activity, not in the shade, good luck. We're here on this basketball court, the temperature coming in, at 135 degrees. This family visiting from Tucson with advice on braving the triple digit temps. Hat, sunscreen, proximity to water, so like the splash pad is here, and then the kids always bring their water bottles, so ice water is a must. The heat is especially dangerous for those working outdoors, and with Californians tempted to blast their ACs, 
Los Angeles area officials issuing multiple flex alerts asking people to practice energy conservation at home. We want to make sure that we are getting these transformers to our districts as close to the customers as possible so that if there were to be an outage, they're not waiting for supplies, that the supplies will be ready for them. Back here in Weed, this mill fire still 0% contained and a red flag warning being issued as firefighters prepare to battle winds higher than 30 miles an hour. Alex Brashe, ABC News, Weed, California. And Friday night lights in Uvalde much different this year. That's right, the stands were packed, emotions running high as the team got set to play its very first game at home since the Robb Elementary School tragedy. Not the same and you always kind of feel like a little bit heavy hearted about everything. Now, as fans walked to into the stadium to support the Coyotes, they did it knowing many family and friends are still hurting. But win or lose, the team taking the field was a moment for the community to get away from everything the town has gone through. The only word I could describe about this community is grit and being resilient. And when you born and raised here, it's just about bleeding that maroon and white. Now, before kickoff, there were 21 seconds of silence to honor the 21 Robb Elementary School victims. Now, as for the game itself, it might be a contender for KSAT's Game of the Year. Andrew Seeley was the sideline reporter for our live stream last night and has the sights and sounds from the sideline. We knew Friday night in Uvalde was going to be special, but what we got on the field was even more remarkable. Game tied at 28 late in the fourth quarter. The Coyotes rallied thanks to an incredible play from Jonathan Jimenez, cutting back against the grain to set up the game-winning touchdown with 17 seconds left on the clock. He's coming back. He's coming back. How did he break out of that pile? He's got room to run. He's got blockers and running through the quarterback. He's out of the 40, the 35, the 30. Oh, he made his inside step. He's running step, out of gas. And he's out of bounds at the 10-yard oh. line. It wasn't supposed to be a cutback. I thought it was over. I turned I turned to our offensive coordinator and said, we're going to run it out and go to overtime. And next thing I know, the little fort's running down our sideline. So JJ's a great athlete, and when he seasons and gets in the open field, I just hope nobody was going to block in the back or something like that, because once he gets loose, he's always got a chance. What happened next was almost a foregone conclusion, but it was no less spectacular. 17 seconds remaining. Can they pull off this incredible victory? And into the end zone they go, and it's gone! Touchdown, Uvalde! Number Devin. five, Devin Franklin with the reception led perfectly by Brody Carnes for the touchdown. Junior John Elizondo ended the game with a sack on the next drive and on a night that honored the 50th anniversary of the Coyotes' 1972 state championship, Uvalde played like champions to earn the 600th win in program history. Came out here and we fought. We fought our hardest, but we never gave up. And, you know, that was just what this town needed. And these needed this win. It's an amazing place to live, an amazing place to coach. That was crazy. And now, you know, with all the distractions today, the way they played, especially the second half, and to come back like that, I feel like you can play with anybody now. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Andrew Seeley. I think everyone's cheering them on. So awesome to hear the excitement also in Greg's voice as he was calling that game. All right, meanwhile, the Houston Texans are paying tribute to you, the Val Uvalde community as well. The NFL season gets kicked gets kicked off. Head coach Lovey Smith and two players surprise Uvalde High School varsity football team with an in-person visit Thursday night and Friday morning, and the team will wear Uvalde Strong helmet decal for their home opener against the Indianapolis Colts on September 11th. And if you were at the game last night, Texans cheerleaders and the mascot were in town for the first football game in the Honey Bowl. Jonathan, I mean, I, I was the first time I watched it. I like definitely teared up. Um, it's such an emotional thing. Chills. It's, I mean, congratulations, guys. Absolutely. Congratulations. And you're right, Sarah. This is something that no matter how many times you watch it, you can't help but to just get emotional. It's it was great to see. Great to see. Time now, 939, 81 degrees. All right, you may have seen this prank, but you probably don't know his story. So after the break, we'll introduce you to the Texas Bushman and show him in action. He even, he even scared some of our KSAT employees. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to miss it. that. And taking a look outside, it is 81 degrees. Folks are gearing up for this Labor Day weekend. What those clouds may have in store for everyone. Sarah Spivey will have a look.
Jonathan, have you ever heard of the Texas Bushman? The Bushman? <laughs> Yes, the Bushman. He's a prankster who has gone viral for his river walk scares. Well, I've never heard of the Bushman, but I do know of some people who have met him. And here's the story. You've likely seen his viral pranks. The Texas Bushman has made a name for himself on social media with his pranks, routinely gaining millions of views on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. But did you know that this internet star now calls the San Antonio area home? We sat down with Joe, the man behind the bush, to see how he got started. Well, my mother uh, originally shared a video with me of another guy doing the prank, and uh, I just couldn't stop laughing at it. I found it hilarious. I binged watch all his videos, and I just wanted to uh, try it for myself. So armed with just a ghillie suit, a potted plant, and a camera, Joe started recording videos all over the U.S. Done it in Dallas, Austin, uh, Denver, Colorado, L.A., St. Louis, Houston, Galveston. Out of all the cities I've done the prank in, uh, the energy, the traffic, the vibrancy of San Antonio, it just... It's a perfect match for the prank. And pranking isn't just a hobby for Joe, it's a full-time job. Around 15 hours of raw footage gives me around 15 minutes of viral content. So the next time you're walking around San Antonio, keep an eye out for the Texas Bushman. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. That's right, keep an eye out for the Bushman. So now that we know his story, <laughs> of course we had to let him do his thing right here at KSAT. Okay, head to our Instagram page or our website and he, you can see this, but here is the Texas Bushman in action scaring some of our crew. Don't scare Alicia. Yeah. That's right. Alicia. Or David for also, that matter. Also, all the all the cussing. <laughs> hey, I didn't. I didn't. I, you didn't cuss, Sarah. I you even just, said, "Oh my gosh." Oh goodness. <laughs> oh dear oh, me. Goodness, it's the bush man. Oh, oh. Needless to say, no bush can be trusted. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Always be Let's suspicious. Take a look at uh, the radar right now. Uh, we have got. <laughs> Stop, Sarah. Some showers, some showers and storms down near the coast. We've got some rainfall near Port Lavaca and in areas near Corpus Christi too. So unfortunately, this weekend is not going to be a great weekend for the Texas coast. So uh, just know that if you do have plans uh, out across areas like Port Aransas, Corpus Christi, Rockport this weekend, unfortunately, uh, it does look like it's going to be even rainier than here around the San Antonio area. Now in Valverde County, we do have some showers and storms near Devil's River State Natural Area and near Comstock, but it was earlier in the overnight hours that we saw quite a bit of rain just north of Rock Springs, five inches of radar estimated rainfall. And I'm showing you this because notice how localized this heavy rain was. Rock Springs area itself still got about half an inch of rain, but just to the northwest of Rock Springs by about four miles, five inches of rainfall and that localized heavy downpours. That's what's going to be possible this afternoon around San Antonio and this evening. As I show you the high res future cast, you can see what I mean. By about 3, 4 p.m., we're going to have 60% coverage of some downpours near New Braunfels and uh, across uh, the metro area. And then even into the, the early evening hours, closer to 7 o'clock tonight, about 60% coverage of these heavy downpours. Just like what occurred earlier in near Rock Springs, there will be those that get a, a ton of rain, and then there will be those that just uh, get a few spits and drizzles. That's the nature of this uh, type of localized rainfall. Then by the evening hours, we'll see more 
uh, light rainfall around San Antonio and we'll start off the morning tomorrow with some light rain around San Antonio. The heavier rain will be well to the south as we head into the afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon there will be about a 40% chance for some downpours in the afternoon hours. So here's what you need to know this Labor Day weekend. It is not going to rain all weekend long everywhere. You should have a plan B or quickly duck inside if you have outdoor plans, but don't cancel cancel these events. Uh, so uh, Saturday today scattered afternoon rain Sunday a little bit of lighter rain, especially in the morning and even on Monday a few downpours are possible today. What we're washing out for is heavy rains resulting in localized flooding issues. And remember when thunder roars go indoors. We'll be keeping an eye on that for you. Outside right now is 80 cloudy degrees. It feels like 85 and temperatures are uh, generally in the upper 70s, low 80s right now. It's 77 in Uvalde, 78 in Hondo, 76 in Kerrville, 81 in New Braunfels and good morning in Pleasanton. It's 81 degrees. Just to summarize everything I said today will be fairly quiet through the first part of the day in the afternoon. That's when we'll have some downpours, 60% chance there and uh, temperatures today should only be in the 80s. Let's take a quick check of the tropics. We're approaching peak hurricane season and it's been a fairly quiet Atlantic hurricane season. Even now we've got tropical storm Danielle in the northern Atlantic and tropical storm Earl uh, in near Puerto Rico, but it's actually going to be taking a hard uh, turn to the east and not impacting uh, the island all that much. So that's some good news there for them. Now for us again, just a reminder, we're going to have the opportunity for rain this weekend. It's not going to rain all weekend long everywhere, but the chance is there. And then into next week, we'll see our rain chances go down and our temperatures go up. Jonathan and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. So if you're not looking at your screen right now, you're going to want to take a look at this video. Wait for it. There it is. Oh my gosh, look at it. Wow. So this is a massive dust storm in Chandler, Arizona. That's the southeast part of Phoenix. As a storm passed through, more than 11,000 power outages were reporting. I saw this shared on social media um, a lot of the last day or two. It's so eerie. It's like something out of a movie, but this is a dust storm. And Sarah, they have dust storms how often there? They have dust storms pretty often. I mean, there's loose soil up there and they get those high winds. So, but this one is pretty picturesque and it's uh, also being backlit by the sun too. That's why it looks the way it does. It looks, it looks, so it looks more intense than it probably was. It was pretty was. intense, I'm sure, but, uh, but the, the sun lighting it on the back makes it look a little bit more beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful and scary, eerie. but you know, mother nature at its finest. You know, beautiful shot for sure. It. All right, it's 950 and 81 degrees. Now, delicious things are happening here on GMSA. After the break, a preview of Texas Eats, and we're about to dig into some yummy treats. Yeah, we just had a delivery. Not these burritos. It's something sweet. Stay tuned. You're going to want to see this. And just taking a look around outside at the road. So far, not a lot of crazy traffic out there. Not seeing a lot of incidents out there. But, of course, if anything pops up, we will let you know about it. And your pick three numbers are four, seven, five, and three. Your daily four numbers are zero, nine, seven, six, and two. All right, cash five, three, five, six, 15, 18. Let's take a look at the mega ball. I know it's over 120 million, I believe. 39, 40, 52, 60, 67 mega ball, 20 mega plier two. Okay, welcome back. Usually David Elder is here, but instead we got a special delivery to yes. promote today's Texas Eat episode. This is from the old fashioned sticky buns. Um, they're this located on awesome. Vance Jackson. Can we Look take this one? Oh, wow. So this one looks like it's uh, almonds and chocolate chip and some kind of syrup. Yeah, and this is just the classic one right here. They look delicious. This is a pecan cinnamon roll yum this is though the interesting one i'm not gonna lie take a, a bite take breakfast a bite. sandwich this is a breakfast sandwich i'm gonna try In it a cinnamon roll with cheese and egg oh dear how do you feel about that sarah mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it tastes like? what it, it taste? tastes like um when you have like pancakes and cinnamon oh, pancakes okay, that can't be in your like with your breakfast platter, mm -hmm. just tastes like a breakfast platter. 
Very good. Okay, so this interesting. This is a preview of what's to come on Texas Eats today, and I'm gonna really dive into this one in Sounds just a good. bit. <laughs> With a glass of milk. <laughs> With a glass of milk. Uh, 956 and 81 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, from new grills to mattresses to summer clothing, we're going to show you some of the best deals you'll find during September. It's going to continue to be quiet for the first part of the day here, but in the later afternoon, early evening, that's when we'll see some scattered downpours out there. Tomorrow, the rain should be mostly, mostly pardon me, in the morning. Uh, and then on Labor Day itself, we'll be dodging a few showers and storms in the afternoon. Otherwise, it's going to be hotter next week with less rain chances. By the way, that cinnamon roll sandwich I just had, it tastes a lot like a McGriddle. So it's got that sweet, it's got that savory. It was pretty good. I think people are just getting more and more creative with what food combinations oh, for they're making. sure. Just good. eating. Sarah, this. you're enjoying your cinnamon. Yeah, obviously, I think it's very good. <laughs> this is the um, old fashioned, I'm dripping onto the desk here, gross. Um, old fashioned <laughs> sticky bun company. Um, they are located off of Vance Jackson. They're going to be previewed today in David Elder's Texas Eats episode, which comes up in just a bit. Well, folks, good thing we've been laughing. Thank you so much for joining us. Because <laughs> laughter makes you lose weight. That's right. As Keep you're that in eating mind. a cinnamon roll, we'll need it. Tight. The seat starts right now.